Welcome to Tech Fans, a channel dedicated to daily updates on rockets and space industry. You know, your comments and insights have been helping the Tech Fans community become more useful and meaningful. Elon Musk, along with his rapid expansion of Starlink satellite internet service, is making Russia, China, and North Korea afraid. And why is this? Well, let's find out in today's episode. There's been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in this interesting episode. Authoritarian states are always concerned about Starlink satellites because of their service's ability to provide broadband internet service almost anywhere on Earth with nothing new required on the ground aside from a small terminal. These satellites orbit at several hundred kilometers in low Earth orbit, versus 35,000 kilometers for telecommunication satellites in geostationary orbit. Thus, their terminals can be smaller, portable, and easier to conceal, smuggle, and infiltrate. With one of these terminals, users can cheaply and quickly bypass national controls on the internet and information access, plus make phone calls or VoIP, Skype, or Zoom calls outside of government-controlled systems. It is this freedom of information access and communication that has Russia and China so concerned, and that provides an opportunity for democratic states to rebalance their current information disadvantage. Think back to the Russian influence on Brexit, the 2016 US elections, and the COVID-19 infodemic. What the satellite systems offer is an opportunity to reinvigorate the dictator's dilemma, the fear that authoritarian leaders have of non-regime narratives reaching their people or their people communicating outside of government-approved channels. Just how powerful is this fear? Moscow reacts more negatively to criticisms and threats to its information control than it does to NATO exercises. Russia's legislative body, the State Duma, is considering fines for individuals and companies in the country that use Western-based satellite internet services. The proposed law seeks to prevent accessing the internet by means of SpaceX's Starlink service, OneWeb, or other non-Russian satellite constellations under development. According to a report in the Russian edition of Popular Mechanics, the recommended fines range from 135 US dollars to 405 for ordinary users and from 6750 US dollars to 13500 for legal entities who use the Western satellite services. It's not surprising that Russia would take steps to block Starlink service as the country's space chief Dmitry Rogozin views SpaceX as a chief rival in spaceflight. Rogozin also has been critical of both NASA and the U.S. Department of Defense for subsidizing SpaceX through government contracts. According to Rogozin, Starlink is a little more than a scheme to provide U.S. Special Forces with uninterrupted communications. As he said in August of 2020, Starlink is part of a rather predatory, clever, powerful, high-technology policy of the USA, which uses shock and awe in order to advance before all their military interests. Rogozin also called SpaceX's claim that Starlink was created in order to provide internet service to the 4% of the Earth's surface not covered by terrestrial internet nonsense. On the other hand, Russia is not to be outdone by Western competitors. They are planning their own satellite internet constellation known as Sphere, which could begin launching in 2024. However, there are questions about the affordability of this constellation. The program's budget has not been confirmed, but some reports have suggested it could run as high as $20 billion. Meanwhile, the current budget for Roscosmos, the Russian space corporation led by Rogozin, receives about $2.4 billion a year. Obviously, the cost of the project is far beyond the amount of money Russia spends on civil space. Thus, cost alone can blow away Russia's dream of owning a satellite internet network. China's reaction is even more vehement. China is not only planning to launch a competing service, it has Starlink's Musk concerned about having his satellites blown up. Let's start with China's answer to Starlink, China's SatNet, and the GW or Guo Wang mega constellation. Spectrum allocation filings submitted to the International Telecommunication Union by China in September last year revealed plans to construct two similarly named GW Low Earth Orbit constellations totaling 12,992 satellites. 
one will have 6,080 satellites set to an altitude of 508 to 600 kilometers above the Earth, and the other will have 6,912 satellites at an altitude of 1,145 kilometers. The filings indicate plans for GW to consist of sub-constellations ranging with inclinations between 30 to 85 degrees. The satellites would operate across a range of frequency bands. Not only that, China could pose a significant hurdle for SpaceX's Starlink. The Chinese government would have to agree to let SpaceX build antenna dishes or ground links to send and receive data to and from the company's spacecraft. But that nation routes internet access for its 1.37 billion inhabitants through the Great Firewall, a censorship technology that blocks foreign news, mentions of citizen uprisings like the Tiananmen Square massacre, or anything else Chinese officials don't like on the web. So what if SpaceX continued to broadcast uncensored internet over China despite not being given permission? If they get upset with us, they can blow our satellites up, which wouldn't be good, Musk said. China can do that, so we probably shouldn't broadcast there. And this is really not a joke. In January of 2007, the PLA launched a kinetic kill vehicle, the space equivalent of a giant bullet atop a mobile multi-stage rocket. The target was an old Chinese weather satellite called Feng Yun 1C, and the head-on collision between the two objects happened at roughly 18,000 miles per hour, or 8 kilometers per second. In the case of China's 2007 anti-satellite test, however, the impact created nearly 4,000 new detectable chunks of space debris. What's more, roughly half of those chunks will stay in orbit until 2027. Despite the vast distances that separate satellites hundreds of miles above Earth, Pieces of FY-1C have already destroyed a Russian satellite and nearly whacked the ISS. So even if China doesn't exercise its satellite killing capabilities, which it has continued to develop, SpaceX will have to confront the persistent threat of space junk smacking into its giant constellation of internet satellites, and creating even more of a danger if that happens. North Korea which bans its citizens from accessing the internet and infamously attacks leaflets with machine guns, shells loudspeakers with artillery, and punishes citizens for accessing Chinese cell phone towers, has yet to comment publicly on such services. However, given its history, Pyongyang's reaction is unlikely to be very positive. In December of 2021, Joseph Oshbacher, the new director general of ESA, also urged the continent's leaders to stop facilitating Elon Musk's ambition to dominate the new economy, warning that the lack of coordinated action meant the U.S. billionaire was making the rules himself. However, Musk afterwards snapped back at Oshbacher's criticism. He said, Space is just extremely enormous and satellites are very tiny. This is not some situation where we're effectively blocking others in any way. We've not blocked anyone from doing anything, nor do we expect to. SpaceX has already launched nearly 2,000 satellites for its Starlink broadband communications network and has plans for tens of thousands more. Musk also rejected suggestions he was squeezing out future satellite competitors, because as he said, each orbital shell around the Earth is larger than the planet's surface with an additional shell every 10 meters or so further out into space. That would imply room for tens of billions of satellites. A couple of thousand satellites is nothing. It's like, hey, here's a couple thousands of cars on Earth. It's nothing. Wow, that's all we have today. Which part impressed you the most? Let us know in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you won't miss any new update from us. Thanks!